Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Today we're going to mess around with the chameleon coils that you can attach to the chameleon whips. Chameleon makes a ton of whips and they're all super high quality. Those are my go-to whips or my favorite whips to use. Usually I don't go in about what my own personal opinion is other than having fun, but I've used a bunch of different whips and the chameleon ones are the strongest ones out there so far. So what I've got to do first is I've got to get a spike in the ground in order to, that's why I'm holding a piece of wood here, I gotta get a spike into the ground in order to hold these whips up. So let's get to it. I do not have a rubber mallet, so I'm gonna use a regular hammer, but in order to protect everything, hopefully I have enough hands to do all this, I'm going to use a board. So I'm gonna hit the board instead of hitting the spike. The spike will take it, but I've got mechanical empathy and I wanna take good care of my stuff. And this is gravel, this ain't moving. And the farther down you put it in, the harder it's gonna to be to get it back out. We're gonna start out with the red coil, and I'm gonna attach that to the blank adapter, which gets me 3 8 24 on the bottom, SO239 on the side, and 3 8 24 on the top. And then I'm gonna use this radial plate so I can get my radials put out. It's got those little holes in the side for the banana plugs to put in the radials. It's gonna be perfect. So step one is to put the radial plate, the radial adapter, on the bottom of the blank adapter and then screw that into the spike. On the side of the spike here, you'll see this red thumb screw. You can easily put radials under that as well. From there, I'm gonna put on the red coil. We've got the SS58, we've got the SS17, which is 17 foot, and then the big boy, the SS25. This one's good on 30 meters in the first place. Adding this red coil gets you to 40 meters. So that's what we're gonna test out and verify today. All right, let's get it fully extended. Check for overhead power lines. Interesting. So there is the ground spike, the blank, the radial plate, the coil, and the 25 foot whip, which goes up into that tree and rests on one of the branches. And then my RV with metal siding right next to it. And I bring this up because everything affects everything. I'm in a compromised space here. I only have about 40 feet of RV slot here. And then I've got this big tree and I've got the metal siding on the RV. So, so we'll take that into account when we do our SWR measurements. In order to connect radials, you have to have radials to connect. This is a solderless radial kit and we're gonna get this built up real quick. All right, individual winders. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, wow. Yeah, I counted right, there's six winders there. Cool. And then we have plenty of wire. What do we have for hardware? Looks like we have crimp on connectors for strain relief, we have loops on the end for connecting these to tent stakes. We've got some heat shrink. We've got the banana plugs themselves. And then this is pretty slick. It actually comes with the tool you need in order to tighten down your banana plugs. These collars slide off. You slide your wire into the end there. And then there is a little set screw on the side to get them to set in place but this is where it gets to be pretty interesting. I, I like it when people do this kind of stuff. You can see that the screwdriver handle is the same as the banana plug shroud, whatever you want to call that thing. So that's a good reuse of, of devices and it keeps your manufacturing costs down and that's all pretty good stuff. It's like when you go to a barbecue joint or a Mexican restaurant, there's only really four things on the menu. All right, back from getting the wire all cut up. I wrapped it back up, but I do have my six loose ends. And in order to make easy work of this, I have this kasabi, 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 I don't know how to pronounce that, but it is a 50 meter for you purist or 165 foot tape measure. And it makes it really easy to work with antennas, especially since it's in meters and feet. So you can do both. And then it all rolls up into this nice compact package. I'll leave a link for that down in the description as well as all of this other stuff here that I'm working on. But we've got to get these banana plugs on so I need some wire strippers in order to do that. How much wire do I need to strip out of here in order to make a good electrical connection? That much. Yep, I need that much. And then these are my Kiwi's wire strippers and they have this little guide here 
so that I can measure the depth of the cut that I want. And that looks good to me. So we put that in until we hit the guide. And there's one. That was my fault. Or is it the fault of this being Kevlar coated? Super strong stuff. There we go. Two, six. Okay, and for those of you that are curious about these kinds of things, this is copper tinned Kevlar coated 20 gauge wire. And what I need is to get all my ends prepped. So first let's unscrew all of these. And then what we wanna do is take your shrink wrap and put that on first so that you don't forget to do it later and have to go through the entire other end. And the goal of this mission here is to run out of pieces. And they do have a solder version of this kit as well. And then let's double check which direction these go on. They go like that and screw down. So we want the, the knurling part, that textured part, to go on first. And I'm going to move these out of my way so that I don't make some mistakes later on. Let's get this unscrewed and then re -screw. Oh, there's two screws. Why are there two screws? Well, okay, I get it. I like that. I like that even better, actually. All right, so what we want to do now is, now that I know that there's two screws in there, I'm gonna put this down so that the first screw grabs the wire and the second screw grabs the insulation. And how do I know where that is, where that point is? I'll do the same fingernail trick as I did before, just like that. And you'll also be able to feel it because it will be attached and won't come back out. Yep, there we go, that's attached. Let's get it nice and tight and nice and tight. All right, that is fully tightened down and I'll get the other five of these done and then we'll come back. You guys had probably spotted this right away, but I was actually wrong about putting these on first. These go on first and then these go on top of them. So save these until the end and I've got to go back and remove them all, which is easy enough to do at this point in the game. All right, now that I've got that all done up, Chameleon gives you 100 feet of wire. You can either make six 16 plus foot radials, which is what I've done, or you can make custom length radials of whatever size you want. It, I mean, it's your kit, make it your own. And so I'm not worried about cutting this little bit extra off the end. What I do need to do though, the reason why I'm doing this, is I need to make sure that I've got continuity between the banana plug and the jack back here. And once I get this done and everything's tested and everything's got continuity like it's supposed to, then what I will do is come back and trim the end of this so that we don't have loose wire frayed around the edges here, frayed around the ends here. So for continuity, any old meter will do you just fine. This is my favorite little portable pocket meter that I use for doing little jobs like this or going around outside or something. Just put it into continuity mode and when it beeps, you've got an electrical connection between the two. So what I wanna do is pick up the first banana plug and then test, oh, I forgot to strip one. Test out each of these wires. So first banana plug, wire one, no, no, no. Oh, right there, that one's good. So we'll let that one dangle off the edge of the desk while we do the next one. All right, now it's time for the final assembly. Let's get some of this mess out of the way. Not much of it, but some of it. Put that on, screw it down. We've tested continuity on everything. We've gotten these things off that should not have been put on in the first place. And one of the cool things about these banana plugs is these little sleeves, they dress it up nice, but they also stop those screws from backing out a little bit. There's a little bit of a clearance in there. So you might have to readjust these sometime in the future, but you might not. All right, we've got all of those back on there, and now it's fire time. A little bit free. I don't know how this is going to work out, but we'll, we'll figure it out together. How much does this heat shrink shrink? Here we go. Yep, I think that's all the shrink we're going to get out of that. That's good. All right, one last thing that you can do is 
put these loops on the end in order to hook them up to tent stakes. So first thing you do is put the ferrule on, then you put the plastic loop on, and then you come back into the ferrule again. And you can make these as, as tight as you want or as loose as you want. I am going to make them fairly tight like that so that I have longer wire. And then I've got a couple of different kinds of crimpers. We're going to try this pair here from No Easy. These are meant for your typical spade connectors, ring connectors, terminals, whatever. And did that do a good job? It did a good job of getting stuck in there. Good thing they gave me this handy dandy little screwdriver I can get in there and pry with. But did it make a good crimp? Yep, that made a fantastic crimp. All right, excellent. So we'll keep on using these. So I'll make up the next six of these, the next five of these to get the job done. Then we get to go outside and plug it in and enjoy the fruits of our labors. And I added another variable to the equation. Now I've got a metal truck next to my metal antenna, next to my metal RV, next to my tree filled with water. Let's get these radials plugged in anyway. So these are the banana plugs that I made inside with y'all. And they just slide right on in. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. And now I've got the radials all connected to the radial plate and they're all spread out in the six different directions that are indicated there. This green wire is pretty stealthy. Luckily I'm on gravel and not on grass. You would not see this stuff in grass. Get some coax plugged in. We've got the red coil on, we've got the 25 foot whip. This is supposed to get us into 40 meter territory. Let's take a look. There is my X6100. It's set for 20. Let's change it over to, I guess it doesn't matter what mode it's in. You can see that the tuner is off. I'm gonna move it up to the 40 meter band. I'm gonna move it down to the 40 meter band. And then I'm gonna do app SWR scan. And look at that. We just got into the 40 meter band. There's 7200, there's 7300, and we're flat SWR across the band. Nice. When it comes time to taking these guys out, I recommend collapsing the whip all the way, but I've got this thing leaning in this tree above me, so it should be a fairly easy process to get this thing out and get back onto it. All right, coils removed, accidentally dropped. Okay, well, removing it was easy, but getting it back in is not. It's going polar on me. Here we go. All right, fully extended again. Let's go take a look. Now this is supposed to be 30 meters. So let's try that. There we go, 25 foot whip, resonant on 30 meters. So that'll be all of your data modes and CW. So that's the red coil and the 25 foot whip gets you everything from 40 all the way down. Well all the way up. I always get those backwards. 40 meters, resonant, 30 meters, resonant, and then you get into like 20 meters and above and you have to shrink the whip down to tune it. Just remove this thing off of the antenna altogether. Or one of the cool things about this is there are these little banana sockets here and you can make a little tiny jumper wire to bypass the coil and then you don't have to remove it at all. Okay, that's great and all, but what if I don't have the 25 foot whip? What if I only have the 17 foot whip? Well, there's another coil out there, the black one. And the black one, let me check my notes here. It does the SS58, the five foot eight inch whip on 20 and 30. It does the SS17, the 17 foot whip on 30 and 40. And then it's supposed to get this 25 foot whip on 40 and 60. We've already got the 25 foot whip up. Let's get the black coil swapped in and check it out. That's the black coil in place with the 25 foot whip. And we're supposed to get 40 on this. Let's scan it again. All right, that's six megahertz. And it's going up and up and up and up and up. Now they said it also might get you 60. Let's scan it on 60. And we're at two and a half and we're going down as we get close to the band. Well, there you go. So it'll get you on to 60. And with a little bit of work on your radial system, it'll probably get you on to 40 as well. So 60, 40, 20, no, 60, 40, 30, 20, and then all the way up as you shrink the whip down by bypassing the coil 
with those little plugs that are on the side. I'm going to change this out for the 17 foot whip and on the 17 we're supposed to add 30 and 40 to it so let's go do that. At the 17 foot whip in place I'd show you but it looks like a piece of metal sticking in the air so let's get over to the radio. So we're supposed to add 40 and I'm going to get up to the middle of the band just to make the scan look a little bit easier for us. 7 to 10. Sure. Scan. And we're still starting below the band, but we're still good. Starts to climb up as you get towards the end. Not bad. So that is 74, 7.442 megahertz, and you're at 2 to 1 there. So let's take a look at 30 meters on this because now it's supposed to add 30 meters here as well. There's a big jump. Let's get into the band. Yep. Didn't make it. And again, tweaking your radials here will make a big difference. These are the six 16 and a half foot radials that we made up earlier in the video. Longer radials, shorter radials, more radials. All of these are valid answers to make these changes. Yeah, we got this. All right, so down comes the 17 foot whip. And we're still using the black coil, but now we're gonna use the five foot eight inch whip. This thing is so much lighter than the 17 foot whip. I almost threw it across the parking lot here. I don't know if you guys can hear the thunder in the background, but I'm kinda, kinda racing against the clock here. That's it. Wow. That is the five foot eight inch whip and I'm six foot two inches tall. Having the coil on it and having the ground stake and the blank adapter all contribute to why it's pretty close to my height. Let's get on the radio. All right, so for the five foot eight inch whip, it's supposed to add 20 and 30 meters. So we're already on 30, let's run a scan. We're still a little high on the SWR there. For 30, but the one I'm really interested in is can we do 20? Get to the band, get to the band. Yeah, she's not real happy on 20. Let's run the tuner. Let's put it on a frequency that I know I'm gonna use and let's hit that tuner. Tuner on, ATU lit up, hold down the button. And she's trying, getting close. There we go, we got a good match now. And it's gonna be out until we get to the tuner. You'll hear a relay click right there. And then we've got that section of the band tuned. So it's tunable. I'm gonna get this all taken down and put away before the storm comes in and wipes me out completely. But I wanted to share with you the coils. I wanted to show you some of the tech out, see what kind of bands they work on and get those radials made up. There will be links in the description down below for more information on this stuff here. There's a couple of different versions of the coil. That was lightning very close. The Unplug the coax. The red one and the black one. And on your way down to see those links in the description, there is also a subscribe button. I'd appreciate it if you give a subscribe for more videos like this one where somebody goes out in the middle of a thunderstorm and puts up an antenna and tries to show you how well it works on different bands with different coils. And while I'm packing up, having those six different winders is gonna make sure you don't get that Kevlar wire tangled up. So it's a good thing that all six of them are included. But you can wrap them all on one. You can wrap three on one and three on another. You can do the goat wine, you can do the straight wine, you can do whatever kind of wine you want. It's up to you. That's the beauty of this hobby. Have fun. I've got a couple of different radial systems, even some more radial systems from Chameleon. So in another video coming up, we will try out when there isn't an impending thunderstorm and lightning in the area, extra radials and see what we can do to bring these bands into shape. But I gotta tell you, I've used a lot of coils and these are pretty tiny, smaller than the Sporty 40, smaller than the Wolf River coils, smaller than anything else out there that I have seen so far, besides something that you might be able to make yourself. Pretty cool stuff. There's a video right over here I think you'll enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.